I got here. This is life-size Qbert. As you can tell, my super physique outmatches this man right here. I used to DJ garage parties and stuff, and um, there'd be some times where I'd do the same garage in other months, and I'd see this kid pop up every now and then, and um, it would happen to be Qbert. He would like approach me, like, yo, I dig what you do, Mike. So I said, well, I'll show you some stuff when I come to my apartment. He'd sit there and just watch me practice the whole day. Then in between my practices, he would ask me, how do you do this? Can you do that again? My advice, do not show this guy your scratch that you found and developed because he will take that and understand it so much more than you have. You know, he's like the Louis Armstrong of scratching. You know, even everyone tries to dress like him, except me though, I look a lot better. One day everyone's gonna try to look like Yoga Frog. But for now, we got this guy, the one and only DJ Qbert. <laughs> This is a fader, uh, so you can just, what it is, is just on and off. You know, that's all it is. It's kind of like talking, you know, you just, you just speak what you're saying, you know. The more, the more uh, techniques you know, the more, it's like each technique is a word. And so the larger your vo vocabulary, the more articulate you can speak. Farts. Burps. Beat juggling is the uh, live manipulation and remix of music right before your eyes. Um, usually what you do is kind of, you kind of use the same two records. So this is like, you know, I'm just using a piece of the record, it's called the break. It's like, and then this is the same record as well. Like that, right? The fader is like for that turntable and that turntable, right? And in the middle is both. If you mess with both of those beats, you can go. I've always been into music ever since I was, I was a kid. My mom even said when she would play music and I'd be in her stomach, I would kick and stuff. And, and I can't sleep unless there's music on. I was like a, a D minus student. I totally hated school. And I, I always would go home and just do music. <laughs> I had a little turntable when I was a little kid. It was, it was uh, one of those uh, Fisher Price turntables, and I I, uh, I used to play it backwards and stuff when I was like uh, I don't know four or five years old. And I would, I would always say to myself, Wow, I wish I could record my voice and put it on record, and see what it would sound like if I played with my played with my played with my, if I played with my voice. Now you, now you be a DJ. Scratching really came to me when uh, when I heard I guess Rocket. DST was the first one to use that sound. And you can gauge a DJ's skills by when they use that sound. It's kind of like a, if you can gauge a guitarist's skill if they just use a plain acoustic guitar and see what they could do with it. You know, so this is like the plain sound right here, or this one. Scratching is like um, to me, it's like some other kind of intelligence. <laughs> Me and Cuba used to practice. That's where we made up the question and answer. I'd, I'd scratch the question, and he would give me an answer. And so we didn't even have to talk to each other for a whole day. I remember one time he moved away to another city, and I was like, "Damn, how am I gonna, how am I gonna bite it? How am I gonna, uh, you know, how am I gonna get his ideas?" So I imagined all these, like, uh, like DJs from outer space. Like, what would their style be? He took that and um, just like. One in his own world with it. Since Earth is like, a, it's like kind of like a primitive planet. What about the more advanced civilizations? How does their music sound? So I would imagine it, you know, whatever they're doing, and uh, I guess that's how I would come up with my ideas.